Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us again tonight. Another exciting Bible study of God's Word Alive. So uh, set back, get your Bibles ready, and we're going to dig in. Bert, do we have any housekeeping we need to share? Well, if you have any um, special requests that you'd like us to pray for, if you would text them to 479-220-7107. You can also put comments in on um, the comment section on Facebook Live, and those will get passed over to us. Yeah, We're sure hoping you can be a part of this because that's really what makes our Bible study We've, it's kind of like we feel like we're a big family studying the Bible together when you get involved. And we've had a lot of help here lately. We really appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate it. And we'll get yeah. into some stuff a little bit later this evening uh, in addition to prayer requests where you can really chime in and add to our study. Okay. Brian, will you have prayer for us, please? Yes. Let's okay. pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together from wherever we are, perhaps some of us are also watching later. However it is that we've come to this moment in time, Lord, we ask that you would be with us, that you will guide our thinking, that you will open our ears and open our heart to this the topic that we're looking at tonight, and you will realize just how much, and we will realize just how much you want a relationship with us. In mm-hmm. thy name, amen. Amen. You know, uh, this is probably going to be one of the more exciting Bible studies that we've had, uh, mainly because Bert's joined us. Uh, uh, Bert is always here with us. You might not know that. She's always behind the scene. She's has I'm always been there. the glue that keeps us together. T- tonight she's uh, going to earn the dessert, but tonight, though. Yeah, tonight we're covering a topic that, that Bert has really, she, she can really put the cherry on top of the cake uh, for us on the frosting as we, as we go into this subject tonight. And I know that you're going to appreciate her, too. Um, we have been into a very deep study. We know that, uh, that, that at any time that God is about to do something really big, uh, he's always sent a messenger. And we made reference like to Noah. You know, the t- when, when in the beginning of time, in the early ages, there was a flood. But before God sent the flood, he had a messenger. And that messenger was Noah. Uh, Noah warned the world for 120 years uh, he, he, he warned the world to, 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 you know, to come out of the world and, and give their life back to God. And then we know that throughout history, that's always been the case. And then we get in the, in the New Testament, you know, remember before, even before Jesus come, he had a messenger, John the, John John the, Baptist. the Baptist, you know, telling the world. Uh, and I think right now, if, if you open up the Bible and you read the Bible and you look at the, the signs of the time that we live in, you compare it to the Bible it's very obvious that we are very, very close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so right before, uh, right before the second coming of Jesus, God has a messenger. And it's called a three-angel message. And it's found in the very last book of the Bible, about halfway through Revelation chapter 14. And we have spent a lot of time on this message here. It's because it's so important. It's a very important message. To understand that message, you've got to realize that in going back to like Revelation chapter 12, that there was war. Of all places, there was war in heaven. And and so the war was over what? Worship. It's over worship. Yeah. Over yeah. worship. The, 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 the devil, uh, Satan, he wanted the worship that only belonged to God. And so the war is heaven. Heaven and uh, Satan and his angels were what? They were tossed tossed out. kicked out, tossed mm-hmm. out. That's right. But where did they get tossed out to? We're the lucky ones. Right here, right here, <laughs> friends. And very true to God's warning, the, the, the enemy, the devil, he, he immediately starts his own way of worship. And basically what he does, he, he takes, he puts on the garb of Christianity and he, and he deceives people into worshiping his way on a day that, that he set aside. And so that was mainly the message that we have in, in the, the, the three angel message. But the first angel, I want to just touch on this first angel to kind of get us kick started to this really exciting study we got tonight. Revelation chapter 14 in verse 6 and 7. Now this is the first angel message. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And then he says, makes a statement. He says, And worship Him who made heaven, earth, the sea, and the springs of water. 
basically what, what God is saying here, he said, look, I want you to come back and worship me. Worship me on my day and worship me on the way that, that, that I have planned for you to worship me. And uh, I think our big question tonight is, why? And, and, and uh, why, would, why is this so important to God? And, and it, could it be that the reason is because God has got something so much more planned than what we could ever think mm -hmm. on the day and the way that He wants us to worship? So I think this is going to be incredibly good news for all of you out there as we dig into this Bible study and we realize that God's got something so much more planned than what we could ever imagine for us on the day that he has set aside uh, for each for us to worship. And so we're going to unpack what that last part of the first angel talks about. That's right. We're going to unpack what does it mean to worship the creator. Yeah, and, and that's right. No, it's the wording here, and worship him who made. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back. Let's go all the way back to the beginning, all the way back uh, to Genesis, Genesis 1 and 1. And when you get there, Genesis 1, 1, uh, you'll notice in the beginning, God created. In yep. the beginning, God. God created the heavens and the earth. And I want you to notice something here uh, as, we, as we go through this. Notice how he created. He said in verse 3, he said, it said, then God created said he said let there be light and you see this you see this trend over and over verse six says let god and god said let there be a firmament and verse nine then god said let the waters under heaven be gathered together let dry land appear you, you see this process all the way through genesis you see that uh verse 24 then god said let the earth bring forth living creatures cattle and creeping things and so on he goes through this process. This is the way that he creates. This is the way God introduces himself. He speaks. He speaks. He speaks and it's so. But then notice something. Notice something as soon as you get into Genesis chapter 2. Uh, it, it notice that, that, that when he gets here, his means of creation is different. It's like God stops. He stops everything he's been doing the way that he's created and, and then he, 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 it's almost like he gets down on the ground and he gets his hands dirty. He gets his hands dirty gets and he, he gets his hands in the dust. Like and the what's he start doing? He starts, he starts forming yeah. and making. You know, we, yeah. have, we have a granddaughter who loved to play in the dirt. Yeah, I seen a picture and of it a little bit ago. A picture a little bit ago, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story. But, um, you know, for her, being in the dirt, there's great joy. Yeah. And, and I think for God, he had fun mm -hmm. speaking. You know, you look at a giraffe, you look at an anteater, you look at some of the crazy things that we we enjoy. God speaking had yeah. to have been fun. Yeah, he created. He, he very yeah. creative, but something changed. He had to get personally involved That's right. in this last set of creation. Yeah. I, I think probably a mom would understand this, Bert, probably more than anybody else, at the, the intimate uh, feelings, the love the care that God is showing us here. I mean, he, he, out of the dust of the ground, God, God, he got in the dirt. He, he started molding. He started shaping. And, and the Bible makes it very clear that he was creating us in his image. Yeah. It was almost like he's created his children, his little baby. You know, uh, you, you could imagine as a mom. That's one of the first things we do is try to determine who that new baby looks like. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. And that's that's what well, we see here. And in Genesis 2, 7 is what Rick is referencing. It says, And the Lord God, and here he is, and, and, and vision. This is God getting dirt in his fingernails, yeah. under his fingernails that's right. here. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. But here's the, here's the part that really makes us special. Yeah. Um, he didn't speak us into existence. That's it right. It says... He formed us of the dust of the ground and breathed That's into right. his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. That's right. He, it's like he, he poured his life out into us. He, he breathed his life, right. the breath of life. The, the, the original word there is ruach, he, he, the God breath. The, 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 he just put, he gave us part of himself. That's the love. That's how personal this is. That's, that's, it should show us how, not only how much God loves us, but that he cares about us and how he values us. Mm -hmm. Now, the point I want to make out of every bit of this is that in this context, 
in this context of this love, this int- intimacy that we see here with God, this is, this is where we see the first Sabbath being created. Mm-hmm. So you see something here. You see something. The Sabbath is, is a gift from God to man is what it is. Everything that we need to be happy, everything that we need to fill that empty spot and, and, and to be happy and joyful and be hopeful, God has given us. I mean, I could just imagine, you know how we, before we have our, even with grandbabies, I mean, right, you can't see it, we've got a baby carriage right over here. Even <laughs> as grandbabies, we prepare for our grandbabies coming. Mm-hmm. You know, you paint the room, you, you put up the decorations, and you, uh, you know, you decide if it's a boy, it's blue, if it's a girl, it's pink. Pink. <laughs> pink. <laughs> Got that right. And, uh, and, and but you do all, you do all <laughs> these things getting ready. Could you imagine what God's doing? See, if, if you take that, if you look at it from that perspective, I mean, it, the birds of the air, the, the blue skies, the bubbling, babbling brook, the, the, the lofty trees with, with all the colors and everything, everything he, he did for mankind. And then as a cherry on top of the cake, he gives us the Sabbath. Seven. Yeah, I was just thinking, we have a, grand, a, a new grandson in our family, and many of you know what COVID has done to children entering families, grandparents, aunts, uncles, have to wait to see the newborn, yeah. because COVID won't allow you to be in the yeah, hospital, and et cetera. And what we see is a God who's brand new creation, he's so excited about, mm-hmm that the very first thing he thinks about is, I gotta make sure that I get to see these, these kids. Oh, yeah. I, I have to oh, make sure that I get to see these kids I'm often. I'm grabbing it, yeah. I have to see these yeah. kids often. Yes. I mean. Yeah, because I love them so much. Once we could I wanna see, be around them. That's right, once we could see Brooks, uh, our daughter and son-in-law didn't have yeah. a whole lot of peace because it was a revolving door of people <laughs> wanting to see, wanting yeah. to relate to this new person in yes, our family. Absolutely. And God's first instinctive reaction to his creation that we looked at in Genesis 2, 7 is, I want to be with them. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I have, I have a way to do that. That's right. On a regular so are basis. So you getting this picture here? What a beautiful picture this is when we look at it from this angle here. The Sabbath is given to us from God. Just like he gives us all these other beautiful gifts mm-hmm. of creation just for us because he loves us. Now, I want, to, I want to read a scripture to you. Let's go to Mark chapter 2, verse 27. This is an incredible scripture in the Bible. Now, I'm going to, uh, Brian, why don't you read it yep. from your version, and then I want to read it from a version here that I've chose that really brings out, uh, I think, captures the true meaning of this. Uh, and, you, you share your and the, translation And this is the first. verse that... Um, Mark Sometimes, 2.27. Yeah, 2.27. When you hear it in King James and other versions, you can kind of go, hmm, what does that mean? Here's what it says. Mark 2.27. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And and sometimes you go, hmm, I got to think about that yeah. one. Until so, you get to this Listen version. to this right here. Listen to this. This is the New Living Translation. NLT. New Living Translation. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people. You get that? And not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. I love that. That's beautiful. See, the Sabbath is, is a gift to, from, uh, from God to us. No, no, no strings attached. This is because He loves us. It's a gift. So the Sabbath was created to meet the needs of the people, the Bible says. Now I want you to think about this because this is the why. This is the more. No. This is the more here. That's it's where we the, get real hung up. Yeah, as human beings, we sure because we want to. We want to. We want to look at the mandate in, in, instead of the blessing, right? Yeah. And, and and there's a blessing here from from is what we're saying. So God's saying here, not just because I said so. He he said no, no, I mean, no, no. no. He, 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 that that's not how God works. You know, this is a God that God so loved the world. He's not forcing anybody to do anything. He wants us to come to him because we love him, right? He He's wants, not going to force this. He wants more of us on yeah. this day. Yes. It's just like we want more of our grandchildren. Your example. That's we good want one. more of our children. We want more of our friends. God created us in a very personal way. And he's saying, 
I want more of you on yeah. a regular basis. Because you're the apple of my eye. I mean, he loves us more than we can ever wrap our mind around. So he's given us the Sabbath. The Sabbath is, is to be a benefit to us. It is to be a blessing to us, is what it's saying. It's, it's not designed to control us. God created the Sabbath to meet our needs. See, that's what he's our, he, see, he's our creator, right? He is our creator. He knows how we're wired. He knows what we need more than yeah. we know. We don't really know ourselves as good as God does. He knows what we need. There's a great text. We're, gonna, we're mounting back now, all the way back to Genesis 2. There's a great text before we get out of really the creation story mm -hmm. and why God started the Sabbath for yeah. us. Uh, Genesis 2, verses really 2 to 3, mm -hmm. talks about how the Sabbath was put together, why it was put together, and what makes it such an amazing special day. Yeah. Uh, Genesis 2, 2 and 3. Well, I'll just do verse 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. So boom, that's the end of the six days, mm -hmm. and it was good. Okay. Um, excuse me, the end of the sixth day, excuse mm -hmm. me. And it says, On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And there are three words I want you to listen for here. And he rested, number one, on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God, number two, blessed the seventh day. And number three, he sanctified, sanctified it. it. He Beautiful. sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. So the question I would ask is, how in the world is a creator God with infinite power tired why why did he, what what kind of rest was he looking for here yeah. yeah that's a good question yeah i think i think it goes this is the why we're good this is getting in the more yeah think think about it this way think about the the seven day cycle now where did that come from by the way right yeah. where did, do you ever think about where the seven day cycle come from why not yeah. a 10 day why not a 15 day or, or whatever why seven day it comes right from creation here. Yeah. So you think about this this time, this moment in time right here. It th by the act of God hallowing or making holy mm -hmm. this seventh day. What what if you could picture this? It's it's like God just driving a stake a stake of His divine presence mm -hmm. right into the soul of human time. If you could, if you could picture that, it's like God injecting Himself in, into our time on the seventh day. Yeah. He's placed it there, and I, and uh, I think it's important to to recognize that in preparation for tonight, I studied on Sunday, and Monday, mm -hmm. and Tuesday, and a little cramming tonight. Yeah, God was with me. Yeah. God blessed in our efforts to pull notes. We're emailing. We're doing everything, but He's saying. On this seventh day, I have this deep, deep hungering yeah. to be with my children. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do something special. He's going to create rest. We'll talk about that in a minute. He's going to bless that day, and he's going to sanctify that day. Yeah. And it's the only day of the week where he says this. I, I, I want you seven days a week. Yeah. There's something special yeah. going on here. Yeah. There's more to this day. Yeah, he's, he's placed himself. Right here, right here in this seven-day cycle, right here on this seventh day. When our girls went away to college, on occasion they would come home. We'd find out they were coming home for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so I would go to work, and I would cook their favorite foods. I would go shopping for little gifts to put on their bed. And um, all these things to prepare for them coming home and us being able to spend time together. That's right. And the rest, I wasn't so, oh, I was tired because I'm human, but, mm -hmm. but I was full of energy to enjoy that time with them. But I wanted all that time free. Yeah. So everything was prepared and ready so that we could just enjoy that's right. That time together. So you could rest together. So that we could so you, rest you'd together. You already did all the preparation work so you could spend quality time with your children. I love that. that and that's what God's talking about here. We can have, on, on, he's saying on this day, it's like a taste of heaven mm -hmm. that he's brought down to here to us. I mean, we could even, we could, we can just almost picture that. He's, what he's doing, he's making, he, he's making himself available. Yeah. He's making himself available. This doctor here, 
makes house calls. <laughs> That's right. He 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 said, "I'm shutting down everything. I'm resting from all everything else because I want to spend time with you because I care about you, just like you would do with with your with your with your girls." And it, God does the very same thing. So whether we join Him or not, God is literally making Himself available to you, or whether we take advantage of it or not. He He's doing that. Why? Because He loves us and because He cares about us. Now. Think, of, think about this. God created us. God created you for a very special place in His heart. There, there, there was an empty spot in God's heart, so He created you. And so what He's done here, he, want, he has made a day that He has set aside. And He says, you know what? The day I'm spending with you yeah. because mm-hmm. I love you. I love that. Yeah, I love it. But yet, like a lot of people, we tend to forget we tend to wander. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of interesting that that's what happened with Israel. You go to Exodus 20. And this is where many of us learn about the Sabbath. But in Exodus 20, the very first word when in that fourth commandment is remember. Yeah. They mm-hmm. had to get a little jog. Yeah. They had to they had to be reminded that their creator God missed them. Yeah. And he was calling yeah. them back. He, he's calling, calling, he's calling them back to this. Yeah. That's calling what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Brian. He, remember, when you say remember, you, you, you're talking about something that's already had. He says, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember that you've got a creator that loves you. They had been in exile. They had been, mm-hmm. they had been in slavery. They had been, they had been isolated from God. But God has said, hey, look, remember, you've got a God that loves you. You got a God that cares about you, that wants to spend, that values. You have got a God that values time spent with you. Yeah. I love yeah. that thought there. So beautiful, beautiful. So God has given given you the Sabbath. He loves and He cares about us, and He and He wants to remind us how valuable we are to Him. And that each Sabbath, that is the good news. So this is good news, right? That's right. This Wonderful. is the more. This is the more right here. Now, how does that make you feel? I mean, how does it make you feel then about the Sabbath when you know that God has given the Sabbath to you? I mean, you, there's not yeah. another Brian on this earth. There's not. There's not another Bert on this earth. God created you for a special place in his heart, and he wants to Sabbath with you. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he wants to spend that time with you personally. You know, I've visited companies before for some sort of an appointment, mm-hmm. and I walk into the lobby, and there, there's a plaque that says, Welcome, Brian Yeagley. Yeah. Not that often, but I've had that happen. Yeah. And you go, wow, they knew I was coming. Uh-huh. They prepared and they're ready. Yes. And that's what it feels like yeah. when, when God says, remember, come back into rest in me. Yeah. He's saying, I know you. I know right. your name. He's calling yeah. us back. Yeah. He's recognizing us. It, it should make you look forward to the Sabbath, knowing that, right? right? Yes. It should make you anticipate it. Uh, I've even heard uh, say before uh, people would get sad, you know, after the Sabbath was over with because 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 ah, oh. and but but then but then you look forward to the Sabbath, right. you know, and you say, well, I can't wait, I can't wait because I wait can't, can't wait for me and God time because I need it so much. Yeah, that's beautiful there. So all right, now let's take a look at another point that's so valuable about the Sabbath. Deuteronomy chapter five, five verse 12. Brian, we've I've talked got, about that. Got, yeah. yeah, and it's interesting. We talked about Exodus 20, which is a very familiar verse, beginning with the word remember. Here's this word again. Exodus, uh, excuse me, Deuteronomy 5, verse 15. It says, and remember that you were a slave. Now he's talking to Israel. You were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. He's telling them, remember that I saved you. Remember Mm -hmm. that I redeemed you out of bondage. Mm -hmm. And there's another amazing more factor for this day. It is a day that our creator God redeems us. That's right. Recreates us. He, he restores the broken relationship That's right. um, with us. He can do it on Tuesday and Wednesday, but he has this incredible special day set aside, number one, for resting in him, and number two, it's where he restores us. It's where he redeems us right. into his, um, 
into Absolutely. his image. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, I love Deuteronomy 5.12 because it brings out that the Sabbath is also a time that, that we can rest in the fact that Jesus is our Redeemer. It's, it's, it reminds us that, that we, we need to stop worrying about ever trying to be good enough. We need to stop worrying about trying so hard. I mean, I know so many people, and you do too, that just try so hard. You know, they just try so hard to be good enough and everything like that. Friends, I, people give up all the time. It's a fight that you can't win. It's a race that you can't win. The, the Sabbath is a time that we can rest in the fact that Jesus is our Redeemer. Quit looking to yourself. You'll, you'll, never, you'll never measure up. You'll never be able to do it. Only Jesus. Quit looking to self, but fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And there's no doubt for our viewers who have kept the Sabbath for their lifetime or for one day, mm -hmm. you understand that there is physical rest. But the more, the real benefit of the word rest here is just like you said, I can, I can let go my worry and my concern that somehow yeah. I'm going to have to reconnect with God. Yeah. God is saying, no, I've got a day where you can reconnect, where I can redeem right. you, I can restore yeah. you to myself. Yes, you, you are good enough. Mm -hmm. You are a child of God. You are loved. You cannot stop God from loving you. Uh, and, and you can't clean yourself up. You've got to come to Him to do that. Yep. So now I've got, I've got, uh, I've got a, a message here. Thelma Wilson, thank you so right, much, Thelma. Thelma. Thank She's you. my prayer partner. Uh, the Sabbath is for basking in the presence of God as a family and knowing how much He loves us even when we fail. Oh, that's a beautiful and wonderful point there, Thelma. So often the devil trips us up. He is the great deceiver, remember? And he deceives us in the, in, in the falling to this temptation. Then we feel guilty and not good enough. But isn't it wonderful to know that even when we fall, even when we fail, that we can come running back to God, that he's waiting with his arms wide open. And we've talked about this verse before. I apologize, I can't give you the exact verse, but it's back in Genesis 3, 4, it's after the fall. The first words that Jesus uses to his fallen children is, where are you? Yeah. Despite our sin, despite our failing, yes. God has this intense desire to be with us. Yes. And, and that kind of a point lays between the redemptive and the restorative nature of the Sabbath. Yes. And let's go to Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel 20, 12. Ezekiel Good point, 20, 12. Yes. And, and what we're seeing now is the more of the Sabbath for me, yes. especially as I have looked at this. And, and folks, you got to understand, I've been a Seventh-day Adventist. I've been a Sabbath keeper my entire life. And this week has really kind of opened my eyes to some things. Me too, Brian. Um, but Ezekiel 20, 12, Bert, do you have that by chance? I do. You read that? Also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Beautiful point, Bert. Uh, did you catch that? Yeah, and so Thelma, who says that he loves me even when we fail. Yeah. Not only does the Sabbath restore me back into a relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. but it's that process of cleaning yes. me up, yes. changing me week by week, day yeah. by day, into the image of God. And who does it, Ryan? God and God. Only God does it. We can't do it. Rest in that. Rest in the fact that, that God is the one to do it. It is His work. His work. We can rest in the fact that Jesus can and He will redeem us. He sanctifies us. Remember, Brian read it earlier in Genesis, at the beginning of Genesis. Mm -hmm. It's a day, he's both sanctified this day and he's made it holy. holy. He, he right. set it aside. So beautiful, beautiful point there. So so, you, so are you seeing there? there just, God just has so much more, more, so much more. This is good news here. So I've got a big question though. I mean, this is a, something I know you're thinking about, something I've thought about. What about Jesus? What about Jesus? You know, what, what's his thoughts on this? What was his custom, Brian? Uh, and so I, I think to kind of get started on this, the best way I can explain it is, is to go back. And if, if you go back to John in the New, let's go to the New Testament, John chapter one. Uh, I always tell somebody if they come up to me and they say, you know, I've never read the Bible before. What, where would be a good place to start? And I, and I always say, John, John. Chapter, John, go to the book of John. It pretty well sh uh, shares everything. But if you go to the book of John, and, uh, and in the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things, and now catch this, all things were made through Him. Yeah. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. And then drop on down to verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who are we talking about here? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, very clearly. So what do these verses tell us right here? Well, I made a note to myself here. And when you read that, you realize that our Creator, the person who knelt on the ground and, and got his hand muddy That's and right. breathed life into Adam, mm -hmm. is also our Redeemer. That's right. He made That's us, right. and knowing that we were going to flub up, He also made a way to redeem us. Isn't that beautiful? I got chill bumps. Because yeah. think about that. We just got through reading about our Redeemer. Who's our Redeemer? In Deuteronomy 5, mm -hmm. we talked about that. And, and also Ezekiel 20 and 12. Who? Our sanctifier? It's Jesus. Yeah. Who's, who created? Who was, who, was the, who, was, who was the creator right here? Who created the Sabbath? Jesus did. So what does Jesus think about this? Jesus created the Sabbath at the very beginning. He created. And, 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 and so... And then, and then what about now? Let's, let's go a little bit further. What about why he was here on this earth with his ministry here? Let's go to, let's go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Bert, if you'd like to read that. Luke 4, 16. What about, what, did, what, what was Jesus' custom? What did he, what did he think about the Sabbath uh, while he was on earth teaching and healing? Luke 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Okay, so we, we see something. It was it was Jesus' custom. I mean, it was his custom why he was here on this earth, healing and teaching. All right, and then and then if we go a little bit further here, uh, we see that even in Jesus' death, even at his death here, and uh, I've got uh, what the scriptures I picked out here is in Luke chapter 23 and verse 50 through 56 it's here. I won't read all this. I'll, I'll read. Uh, you, I, yeah, go I, ahead. I look down through it. I'll read two verses. Okay. Um, and basically it talks about his death and the preparation, but it says, and this is verse 55. So it'll be Luke 23, 55. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. This is the part I think, Rick, that you were wanting. Yeah. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Okay. So let's see what we can glean from this scripture right here. Let's talk about Jesus first off. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus died on the cross when? Fri on Friday. Friday. They call Friday it the evening. preparation day. Mm -hmm. Good Friday uh, is coming up here pretty soon mm -hmm. as people look at that. And uh, Good Friday preparation day, he died. He died uh, on Friday, and then and then what 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 happened after that? He rested. He rested. He rested. And this is the point I want to make. This is so beautiful right here. He rested. He rested on the Sabbath day, but he rested from his work of redemption. Isn't that beautiful? Just like he rested, just like he rested in his work of creation on the Sabbath and kept the Sabbath. He rested in his work of redemption for you and I. He did that. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then he was, he was resurrected, you know, on, on Sunday, the first day. So uh, that, that's so beautiful here. We, we, we see that. We, we see, and notice here also, what about the disciples? This is something else we can learn. What about the disciples? Here it was. This was their, their king. This was their, the son of God. And, and, and when, what did they do? What did they do? What did they do with the Sabbath day? Did they they didn't they didn't they didn't anoint him for burial, did they? No. They didn't. They they honored the Sabbath. They honored the Sabbath. They even waited to to after the Sabbath was over before they come and brought their spices uh, for, for burial and everything. So so we see that very clearly Jesus Jesus honored the Sabbath uh, at, uh, at, at the beginning of his ministry and then even at his death. Okay, and then another point, we were talking about this earlier, Brian, is that even, even after his death, even long after his death and resurrected, Jesus, Jesus expected his followers to keep the Sabbath. And we read, read about that in Matthew chapter 24, 24 in verse 20. 20. 20. 
Yeah. And this is looking again forward to the destruction of uh, the temple in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which took place 30 years after his death. AD 70. AD 70. Yep. And, it, and it simply says, and pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. So here, Jesus is, who has just celebrated a Sabbath in the grave, mm -hmm. is also pointing forward and telling folks, look, I, I pray that your flight, I pray that your um, escaping, if you want to yeah. call it, doesn't happen on Sabbath. So he's saying, I know that the Sabbath will, will have life beyond my Absolutely. time in this earth. So uh, that's, that's the main point there in it, is Jesus was even looking a long time after he knew that he was going to be resurrected mm -hmm. and still planned on the Sabbath being kept by, by his children. So what about, what, so we looked at Jesus as his custom was. We looked at the disciples, what, what, how they treated the Sabbath, even after Jesus' death. And Paul, one of my heroes in the New Testament is Paul. Yeah. Uh, Paul, he wrote most of the New Testament here. And Paul, even Paul, taught the Gentiles to observe the Sabbath. And so we got a scripture on that. Acts, I got Acts chapter 13, verse 42 here. Uh, what what scriptures did you have, Brian? Yeah, 13, 13, yeah. 42 is a good one. Yeah, go ahead. And it says, so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and, and devout proselytes, and it goes on from there. Verse 44, on the next Sabbath, Almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. So you're seeing not only is it, is the Sabbath now being observed, but it is both Jewish, mm -hmm. the Gentile, yeah. the early Christian church was still not only After worshiping. Jesus' resurrection. Yeah, but they were yeah. not only worshiping, but evangelism and preaching and yep. teaching was taking yep. place on the Sabbath. Uh, that's a good point. Actually, Paul is teaching the Gentiles uh, to honor the Sabbath because like the, 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 it said it was full up and it said the Gentiles the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them. Paul, since they were Gentiles with a certain way of thinking, they, he could have just said, hey, just come back tomorrow on Sunday. But that's not what he said, did it? Come back he, the next no, Sabbath. Come back the next Sabbath and they did and the whole town came out to hear. Uh, so Paul was teaching the whole town full of Gentiles to keep and honor the Sabbaths. So uh, that, that, to me, I thought that was a pretty valuable point here. Yeah. So uh, it, to just wrap up this portion of this here, we see that Jesus is the one that created the Sabbath at the very beginning. He kept the Sabbath as his custom was during his earthly ministry. He even kept the Sabbath at, at his death. death. We know the disciples kept the, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. We know that Paul taught the Gentiles to keep the Sabbath. And uh, did you have a scripture in well, Hebrews? Yeah. Hebrews 4, 9, actually. Um, and I'm just going to wing it off the top of my head. I apologize. But basically it says uh, in Hebrews that there remains a, sa a, a Sabbath rest. A Sabbath and so rest. you're seeing that as you, you look through the New Testament, the idea of a Sabbath rest, the idea of a day where we can rest in God who redeems us, who sanctifies us, and who created us, mm -hmm. that Sabbath has continuity from cover to cover of yeah. my Bible. Yeah. From Genesis to Revelation. Revelation. It does. And yeah. in fact, uh, we're going to have to go back kind of to the middle of the Bible to see just how far reaching the Sabbath is. Go to Isaiah 66, 23. Bert, I don't know, Bert, are you at that one by chance? Isaiah 66 in verse 23. And so, you know, as Rick has said, we, we've seen the narrative of the Sabbath start... Genesis. Genesis. Thread of truth. Thread all of, the way through all the Old Testament. And we jump back to the middle of the Bible, though, to point us all the way forward. Okay. And it shall be from new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all mankind will come to bow down before me, says the Lord. Okay. So do you get this picture here? Uh... Jesus, God, created the Sabbath. And he created it because he knew that we needed time to, to recharge. He, we, he wanted time with his baby bird. Well, that's, I was thinking, he shows up every week yeah. to meet us. That's right. His children. And I think, what if I had planned something really special for my children? And I went and they didn't come. It would break my heart. Yeah. 
And he has given this wonderful gift for us. Mm -hmm. And he comes every week to meet us there. That's right. Special. I mean, but, he's with us. Well, but this is like a special carved out time that, that he's sanctified right. and he's made holy. It's just like I said earlier, it's a taste of heaven is what it is in, a, in, our, in our cycle of time. He's drove a stake in the ground and, and he's planted his presence there for us and, because and, he loves us. And that day is created because he wants more of me. Yeah. He wants more of Bert. He wants yeah. more of you. He wants more yeah. of everybody who's listening. This is the God who loves us so much that he, um, you know, the Bible, sometimes we hear the phrase, he's a jealous God. Yeah. He wants all of us he can get. Yeah. And so he created this day where he can get more and more and more of me. I can understand because I got a grandson now and I want all of him. I get jealous when other people are spending time with him. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love him so much. You're looking at yeah. grandma over there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, but so we get a picture here. We In Genesis, God created the Sabbath all the way through, just wanting to spend time with his children. Jesus kept the Sabbath as his custom. His disciples kept the Sabbath. Paul uh, long after Jesus had died and was resurrected, taught even the Gentiles to keep the Sabbath. And then we get in Revelation that we just got through reading about He's these past several weeks, and we get a picture of a God saying, look, there's a deceiver. It's about worship, I'm, I'm, uh, and, and I'm warning you. And sure enough, it's just like he said. And so, but I got to ask the question, why? Why is the Sabbath so special, Bert? What's more? What is it about the Sabbath? That makes that God wants to give us more and more of. Well, I think it boils down to relationship, and I'm gonna preface this with a little story that I didn't intend on. But a few years ago, my well, she's daughter going off the script. Jamie, it's okay. I, I she's went going off script. script. Okay, well, watch out. <laughs> well, and for me, it boils down to understanding and truly believing how much God loves us. Yes, and that's a struggle for me. Yeah. You know, because we grew up believing we had to be all these things and do all these things. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, Jamie asked me if I could give her three reasons why I loved her. Uh -huh. And so I very smartly responded back, oh, only three. Um, but when it actually came down to texting three reasons, I couldn't do it. I couldn't give her one, not one. Because you see, if I could give her a reason that I loved her, in my mind, I could give her a reason why I might not love her anymore. Uh -huh. And there's nothing. And I told her, I can't give you a reason why I love you. I love you because you're a part of me. Yeah. And that's how God feels about I us. Love that. We're a part of him. Created. Created. Yeah, he and he, he loves he us so much. He his heart out and his breath to us. When I understood that, it changed a lot of things for me. Yeah. So I think, you know, I grew up also keeping the Sabbath. And we learned in Crater Roll how to sing the song, Sabbath is a Happy Day. Yeah. And we would ring our bells or clap our hands or whatever. And um, But it wasn't always, it didn't stay always happy. As we got older, yeah. all of a sudden... There were rules, and and the joy of Sabbath got lost in mm, rules yeah, for a lot happens. of people. Yeah, and comes legalistic or something. It, it, Isn't that the enemy doing that? It is. In the that enemy Babylon, doing that. in that confusion, yeah, in a way, do it yourself. So when our girls came along, we decided we wanted hap Sabbath to be a happy day. Yeah. And the first thing we did when they were just toddlers is we made a Sabbath box. Mm -hmm. And it was in the front coat closet, and it was full of special toys, um, just all sorts of books and puzzles and felts and different things. And on Friday evening, we would put away all the regular toys of the week, and they could never bring the Sabbath box out yeah. any other day. Mm -hmm. So it stayed really exciting and yeah. special. They yeah. loved it when the Sabbath yeah. box came out. And then we began a, a tradition of having soup and cornbread. Yeah. And um, we would have friends over or family over. And um, eventually, we, as our family grew, um, we started doing um, a story time mm -hmm. where we would have a meal together and a story might be read. And we have continued to do this now with our girls and yeah. our grandchildren. Yes. They come on Fridays and... 
you know, the menu changes a little depending on it, people's um, likes and dislikes yeah. and, and things are altered. But that time together as a family, bringing in the Sabbath is so precious yeah. that we all feel yeah. really sad if we yeah. miss out on oh, it. Yeah. And to me, I want my children to experience joy. Yeah. In those hours coming. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that that's instead of telling them you can't do yeah. this and that, let's learn to yeah. love it so that we'll want to do what absolutely it takes to have that yeah. relationship with God. Yeah. That's the reason I wanted Bert on here because it's it's the mother's heart. And I believe that God's got a big mother's heart. Uh, and, and, and in the picture that, that I have captured through this study, because mm -hmm. we study when you, you know, anytime the ones that get the most out of the study is the ones having to dig into it. And I discovered so much more. I, I, I discovered a vein of love here, a mother's love, a God that, that, uh, that, that, that loves us. And the devil has made this out to be, you know, it's just in our carnal nature not to want to be told what to do. <laughs> But, but we, 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 don't, we don't like that, right? We don't like that. And so Satan is through that in our face, you know. Uh, oh, you've got to keep the Sabbath, you know. But it's not about that. It, it's, this is something, he's, it's a gift from God. It's not a mandate, it's a blessing. Well, it's a blessing from God. It's something we need. It's something that, that, that God knows that he's, our, he's our creator. He's our, he's our, he's our father, he knows how we're wired. He knows we need the Sabbath. We need it because because we we're on a big roller coaster. I think mm -hmm. busyness is 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 our is one of the devil's greatest weapons right now. Even good people, good people, uh, Sabbath keepers, non-Sabbath keepers. You know, because you're, you, you're those of you that worshiping just the light that what that you know. It busyness. You get so busy. You get so caught up on the rat wheel and everything. And God has said, slow down. Slow down. You need to. You need me. You need a recharge. I don't know if I'm stealing anything that Bert has in her notes, but a text that has meant a lot to me as I became a grandfather is Deuteronomy six, and it has to do with the joy and the tradition of Sabbath in our family. Mm -hmm. um, and and he's talking to these old. Uh, Israelites who have journeyed for 40 years, wandered all over the desert, lost. They have all sorts of stories to tell. They have all sorts of, of um, experiences to share, mm -hmm. lessons they can share. And um, Deuteronomy 6, um, I'm going to start with verse 6. It says, In these words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. He's talking about their faith. He's talking about... Yeah the experience they've had. And, and I would insert as I continue reading, um, if you have traditions and, and things that you do in your family, continue to share them. Yes. If you don't... Similar to what Bert was start. talking about right there. Start. Yes. yes. Because it says, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, um, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before you, between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Yeah. Sabbath to me, and again, you know, having uh, even one generation earlier, mm -hmm. I saw the same thing in my life. Yeah. Um, the value of the Sabbath, the more of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. was given to me and handed down and yes. handed down. Yeah. It is, it is passing, not just, mm -hmm. it's not my faith I'm passing on. Yeah. It is, yes, traditions around Sabbath, but it is passing on the beauty of the Sabbath, the relationship, the time that God had yes. created for, for me, yes. for my children, and for my grandchildren and on. Yes. To spend time with yes. Jesus. And yes. Beautiful. Okay, gang, we have went through this and time has clicked away on us. But uh, Bert, do you have a final thought? Anything you'd like to add to anything? I think I said. Uh, that's yeah, unusual. That's okay. <laughs> Is it? That, yeah, that's really unusual. I mean, I can say that. I may not be going home with Ouch, it tonight. Bert, but yeah. Bert, Bert, you was trying to kick him, wasn't you? <laughs> you give her a chance for you know one what? more word Bert, and she doesn't have Bert, it. Bert, you said a lot. 
<laughs> you said a lot and you brought a lot to the table tonight. Um, I hope what's happened tonight is that we've made you anticipate this Sabbath day that mm-hmm. God has given us. That you, it's something that you will look forward to. It's something that you would cherish. It's something that you can have confidence in that God is going to meet you there. And he's, he, he's the one that, that has hallowed this day mm-hmm. and sanctified it, made it holy. He set this day apart. So he's waiting on you there. It's a special moment in time, a taste of heaven that, that he wants to impart to you. You know, I'm very literal mm-hmm. and, and I'm not very theological. Yeah. But, you know, special food. Yeah. You know, we always have special food on Sabbath. We go the extra mile. Yeah. Um, all those little things um, make it something that we get excited about in the family, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and I want to piggyback on that kind of one of my final thoughts, I guess, would be the fact that um, in the, the Jewish tradition, um, a Jewish family spends the Sabbath day and as the sun goes down, despite the fact that they're in the middle of this beautiful, beautiful day of, of time with Christ, um, they get sad because the Sabbath hours are, are coming to an end. Yeah. And, once the, and, they, and they want to linger. They want, it, it's a little like when family comes over. Mm-hmm. The goodbyes are hard. They mm-hmm. drag on. That's yes. what it's like for a Jewish person. Then they spend Sunday, mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. Thursday, Friday. They spend their week in anticipation of the next Sabbath. Yes. The next opportunity to spend time with God. Mm-hmm. And that kind of a rhythm, I guess, I would like to challenge myself. I'd like to challenge you. If you have found perhaps the Sabbath not to be a delight. Yeah. Think about ways that it can be. Think about ways so that when that sun goes down on Saturday night, you look forward to the next yeah. Sabbath. And that rhythm continues, and that rhythm continues to, to weekly pull you back. Now, yeah. Despite what has happened in your week, despite the, the mistakes you may have made, that Sabbath rhythm continues to pull you back into the presence of God. Yes. You know, Brian, you got me thinking and and as we've been studying, we've talked about this a little bit. And I know Tim brought this up here uh, last week when mm-hmm. we were talking about this subject here. Um, and, and take this as a challenge. Tim, Tim said this, and, and it resonated with me. We can't expect, if we're, dry, if we're going 180 mile an hour in our life, <laughs> we can't expect to, to, to just run right up into the Sabbath, Friday when the sun goes down, and just start Sabbathing right. with mm-hmm. God. Resting with God. No, because we're so wound up. This you caught it right then when you said as soon as that first as soon as the sun goes down uh Saturday evening and the Sabbath goes down and the new week begins, right then we need to start preparing for the next Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Anticipate anticipating the time that we're gonna to get to spend some me time with God. You know, looking forward to it. I don't want anything to get in the way. I want to make sure this is taken care of. I don't want to be worried about this. I want all that. I don't want all that stuff that clouds my mind and distracts me and, and makes me anxious. I want all that to be set aside so that I can spend some me time with God. And yeah. I want to challenge you to do that through and, this next week. And let me say something. To, to, I guess to be really transparent and honest, um, the Yagleys don't always have their ducks in a row all the time. Really? Yeah, it, it's hard. You got to, me food. It's hard, it's hard to yeah. believe. Don't be discouraged if there are weeks. Uh, the last couple of weeks between grandbabies coming and, and, and various things, it's not been as, as uh, easy merging into the Sabbath in some ways. Yeah. And I miss that because for me, at least for me personally, when it's hectic, it changes my expectation for it, changes my whole um, attitude going into Sabbath. Yes. So it isn't perfect. There are going to be some weeks when when you are ready for the Sabbath, and there are mm-hmm. going to be some weeks when when you fall into it. When you fall into it, gasping totally and, and panting. It. Yeah. And yeah. Um, 
But that's when I fall back on the fact that when my children make a mistake, I still love them. You sure do. And that's when I and have to pick understand. Up the load too, that's you? right. That God still loves mm-hmm. me and cares for me when I go into the Sabbath yeah. hurried. Even though that's and, not my first choice. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what fashionably laid is on this kind of a topic, but, but God, God is eager for our presence, yes. and so don't be uh, turned off if it isn't perfect yeah. in your home. Continue to look for ways to grow your longing for presence with God on yeah. the Sabbath. I think what we're trying to say here is we're we're not telling you what to do here. We're just we're just encouraging you that mm-hmm. God's got something so much more than you could ever think or imagine planned for you uh, on a on a on a day that He has set aside for you. So maybe you maybe you've never kept the Sabbath, and that's totally fine. I mean, mm-hmm. I was forty years old before I'd ever heard this, yep. and what a blessing it's been in my life. But maybe you never have. I just want to challenge you: give it a try, give it a try this Sabbath, and just say, "Okay, God, you know what? According to Your Word here in Exodus twenty verse eight, I'm going to remember." I want to remember this special day that, that I've learned about mm-hmm. tonight. I want to give it a try. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's what David said. So, uh, Brian and Bert, I'd like to spend some time with these with these uh, with these people in prayer tonight. I think that there's no accident that that you are watching tonight. Some of you, like I said, might be hearing this for the very first time in your life. And uh, some of you might be watching later on. A lot, a lot of our people, a lot of our, our, our family, what I call our church family on social media here, mm-hmm. might watch us during the week. Mm-hmm. And that's totally fine there too. But we want to pray for you. Uh, if there's ever a prayer request uh, that maybe you didn't get in, you know, send it through our comments. Because during the week, we, we look at the comments because people will send in comments and give us prayer requests during the week. And, and we would love to be your prayer partner. We wanna, we're family. That's the way we look at this. And so um, maybe if we got time, maybe we could each have a little small sure, prayer. Sure, yeah, I know we've got some prayer requests in. Myra, one of our family, a very dear friend of ours, Myra Small. Uh, Devana Culpepper lost her husband this past Friday. He mm. happened uh, to been a very good friend of mine. And I'm, I'm, I'm saddened, but, but I'm praising God because uh, Cully loved the Lord. And so we're going to get to spend eternity together. Mm-hmm. Praise God for, for that. Yeah, but but Devana needs our prayers, and and then uh, uh, Betty Spire, uh, mm-hmm. a, a good friend of ours, on part of our our family here on on the Facebook uh, program. Also, she had surgery today. We need to keep her lifted up. Bridget uh, Kearns is uh, uh, just a, a a lady that loves the Lord so much, and she's she's got cancer, mm-hmm. and and uh, we need to be lifting her up in very special prayer. Uh, we've got a family that, that uh, ha- hello out there from Texas. Uh, I know that one of our, our our dear dear close family out there is going got some health issues, and we want to make sure uh, that to lift them up in mm-hmm. prayer too. And Jim Jim Craddock also uh, we need to lift up in prayer. And and so anything else that y'all might think of that we could lift up in prayer, Bert, I want to ask you if you would if you'd start us in prayer, and then Brian, and then I'll close us up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our dear fine, kind heavenly Father, we are so thankful tonight to learn of how much you love us and what you did to show that and what you continue to do every day of our lives, but especially on the Sabbath, Father. We we know that that is a gift and we want to honor you. We want to meet you there because we know that each week you are waiting for us to come and join you. Thank you so much for hearing and answering prayers. We lift these people up, so many needs right now. And all the names that were listed, Father, please guide and direct in each one of their lives right now and bring comfort to family. We know that you love us so much that you hurt when we hurt. Thank you, Father, for your love and your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Dearly Father, we call to you tonight. You are our creator. You are the maker of the Sabbath. You pull us toward you every day, but we thank you for that more of the Sabbath 
that gives us a space and a time where we can truly be yours. Lord, we ask that that type of presence be with the individuals that we have mm -hmm. named tonight. Yeah. Lord, they need more than anything just to know that you are there and that you love them, you care for them. And so, Lord, we, we praise you for who you are and for the fact that you want more for each one of us. Yeah. In thy name, amen. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for your love and that you want to give us more and more and more. Uh, I also want to lift up uh, two very precious people to us, Tim, who's going to be traveling tomorrow, and, and uh, Kim, and then also Etienne and Shelly. They're traveling maybe even tonight, part of our team. Be with them, put angels around them as they travel. Bless us all, Lord, because you love us so much. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us. And remember, God has got so much more that he wants to bless your life with, more than you could ever think or imagine. God bless. Bye-bye.